We are back with our second video in this playlist on inferential statistics. In this video, we'll be discussing point estimators. Point estimators use a statistic from a sample to estimate the corresponding population parameter. Some examples include using the sample mean, x bar, to estimate the population mean, mu, or using the sample variance, s squared, to determine or estimate the population variance, sigma square, and using the proportion of successes in a sample, p hat, to estimate the proportion of successes in a population, p. When we have a point estimator, we have a couple of characteristics we want for the estimator. First and most importantly, it should be unbiased so that the distribution centers correctly. Next, we would like it to have a minimal variance so that the distribution of estimators has a small variance. Let's look, uh, look a bit more at these two characteristics. The most important characteristics of, of a good point estimator is that it is unbiased. This means that the mean of the sampling distribution of sample estimator is the same as the target parameter. For example, we know that the mean of the sample means is the same as the mean of the individuals. That means it's unbiased. This way, the estimating statistic does not routinely over or underestimate the target parameter. We have seen that the sample mean is an unbiased estimator for the population mean. Recall that the mean of a distribution of sample means is the same as the mean of the individual values from the entire population. This is exactly what we mean when we say that the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. With the n minus 1 adjustment in the formula, the sample variance is an unbiased estimator of the population variance. This is why the formula for sample variance has the n minus 1, where the formula for the population variance has the n. The adjustment was made to make the estimator unbiased. It turns out in some cases there's more than one possible way to get an unbiased estimator for a particular population parameter. In that case, we prefer to use the estimator which has a distribution with the least amount of variability. This is the minimal variance unbiased estimator. For example, the sample mean is a minimal variance unbiased estimator for the population mean. The main thing we want to take away from this is that x bar is the best possible estimate for mu if we know only the information given in the sample. Let's work an exercise where we find a point estimator. Suppose that we are wanting to know the mean and variance of weights of all UAFS students. It's impractical and costly to measure the weights of the entire population, so we randomly measure the weights of a random sample of 30 students that we see on campus. The fact that the sample is random is important so that we can assume that it is fairly representative of the population of interest. By the way, notice that the data I'm giving you is purely made up. Suppose that we find their weights in pounds and they are as given here in the uh, list that we have here. Suppose that we find their weights. Uh, what is the best estimate of the mean weight of all UAFS students given this data? What's the best estimate of the variance in the weight of all UAFS students given this data? As usual, you should pause the video, work this out yourself before moving on to the solution on the next slide. It's very important that you do this as you're working through my videos because this way you get a chance of practicing this material and making sure that you understand it. Press pause now. Well, we know that the best estimate of the possible estimates of population mean weight is just the mean of the weights in the given sample. Hopefully you computed this correctly as 159.7 pounds, either by adding up the data values and dividing by the number of data values, or perhaps by using one variable stats on your calculator or other, some other similar manner. Similarly, the best point estimator of the population variance in the weight is the sample variance, which is, uh, in this case, 1,745.04488, uh, and that would be in pounds squared. Square root of that would be the uh, sample standard deviation.
So if you did one variable stats on your calculator, squaring the S value would give you this sample variance. Those are our best estimators of the population mean and sample mean. So this is pretty easy to do actually and we've been doing this since the first unit really. But there's a problem with a point estimator, for example a sample mean, is that it's a single number that varies from sample to sample. It's almost certain that the point estimator is at least slightly different than the population parameter. Using a point estimator to approximate a population parameter is like trying to hit a dot on a target with the tip of a dart. If we're good, we can probably get close, but hitting a dot is exactly with the tip is very unlikely. We're most likely going to miss, hopefully by not much, but we're likely going to miss some. Furthermore, we don't have any measure of how confident we are that the point estimator is close to the actual target parameter or a measure of how close it might be. We will address these shortcomings by something we call confidence intervals.